Okay, so I've started to tear into it because I'm going to show you the diffs and what I did. I uh, just thought I'd mention this is the middle diff of the 6x6. So what used to be your rear diff when you started with your donor summit. So not too much is different here. All I did, I just trimmed out a few pieces and cut a hole or dremel the hole for the output shaft. I'll put pinion, I guess. Um, see, I guess you can't see this is coming in from the front. Um, this is a modified diff housing, and then there's also a pinion coming out the back. Um, I, I hope it's obvious to everybody, but you don't have to do anything to your front diff. It's just a normal... The first two axles of the summit are essentially the same as a normal summit the front is 100 percent the same and then the rear is just modified to have an extra output so do nothing to your front which would be here and then your rear aka new middle um is this you have to just trim enough to have the output pinion clearance basically so I'm going to pop it out and I'll show you more in depth what pieces okay, so I got the middle diff out I'm going to take it apart and show you the pieces I used to make it so this is the stock diff part uh, I'll include a link in the description below it uh, just comes apart in two pieces one side has the pinion and the other side is just a back so, I'm going to take this part, uh, I'll probably speed this next part up, and then I'll show you which pieces are which. Just to reiterate, you do nothing to your front diff. It is the normal stock one. Okay, so piece one of the middle diff is just the uh, stock front half. Just this piece. Goes right here like it normally would. Piece two is this. It's kind of a skinnier part. It's made from the front half with the pinion, obviously, and it's cut. Yeah, I'll line it up. It's cut right about just after, like I put the saw blade just after the bump where the pinion comes in and um, just before the kind of it slopes down so they can get a little pointer <clears throat> you want to cut it right there right about there so that's um, yeah I guess this would be piece one this would be piece two and then piece three, yeah, I'll take it off. Piece three is this rear part. Not rear side, I guess. And I believe it is made, yes. It's made from the um, stock component back half um, accompanying piece. Uh, I cut it, so yeah, it comes, comes out like that. So I cut it um, just right after this groove right here. So I put my saw blade, butt it up to that, and then cut. So then it comes out. Oops. So then it comes out looking like that. And then that's uh, that's the those three pieces uh, make up the middle diff. And obviously on your other side you need another pinion and bearings and whatnot of course and then yeah that's that's pretty much it for the middle diff not too bad okay so I'm just about to take out the rearmost diff here and I just thought I would show you how it looks in the carriers uh, the pinion or sorry the ring gear is on the 
right side looking from the rear this is the where the rear bumper would be uh, and then the pinion comes in in the middle so as you can see I had to carve apart these carriers quite a bit I had to cut a big notch in here for it to even slip in um, yeah I guess I'll take this uh, diff out and then I'll show you a bit more uh, what a bit more how I uh, carved out the carriers I guess it's easier to see when the diff's not in there but it's pretty extensive and it's by far the most labor intensive part of the conversion okay so now we get to the juicy part the rearmost diff so the rearmost diff uses two of these um, front pieces from the stock diff housing the first one is just like this and as you can see it is I don't know if you can see yeah you can kind of see there it's cut right pretty much right where the top of that hump ends and whoop, yep just like that it becomes this you can see it's cut right at the hump and then actually the part that gets cut off gets rotated I believe and becomes oh no that's not right now this little piece here is cut from yeah it's cut from the rear portion so I believe it's cut right kind of at the same place as before like in that middle line right there and then once you cut that so that becomes this piece and then the last remaining part is actually a complete front housing um, and I just nicked the rear well front um, pinion part off because there is no pinion coming out of this one so I just nicked it off and literally cut a piece of plastic and super glued it on. I could probably 3D print a part now, but I didn't have a 3D printer when I made this. So that's really it. Um, that's the three pieces that make up the rear diff. And then other than that, it's just your standard diff component. So it's actually not that hard. Um, but squeezing this in, it's essentially a rotated... Uh, rear diff I guess um, so fitting it in the rear bulkheads is quite a challenge so I'll show you um, I guess that process and what I had to do once I get this all back together I am putting some aluminum diff cups in instead of the plastic which is always a good idea because you want not any flex at all so that's kind of the reason I uh, finally got the motivation up to take apart my 6x6 and show what I did. Okay, I got the diff back together. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, stock bulkheads to reference, but I will show you kind of what I did to make them work. Um, they're really chewed apart. I'll tell you that right now. You're going to be doing a lot of dremeling. But it actually isn't that bad. You just do a bunch of test fitting and then uh, dremel away where it's hitting or whatever and eventually you end up with something like this so here you can see that diff yeah, butts into that little curve um, and it's kind of halfway right there so here's what mine looks like uh, it's also dirty which doesn't help and I never did clean it up like I said, it's kind of a, it's more of a functional thing than pretty, but so that's how it sits on the, uh, I guess, passenger side. And then the driver's side, if we're going with that terminology, is even worse. Like, there's almost nothing left. And one of the major uh, drawbacks, I guess, is the diff housing, or not the diff housing, like the diff selector part of the housing kind of rubs right in there so you really got to remove quite a bit so yeah I had to make a notch like that and then carve a lot of it out it does end up fitting kind of just right like that same thing it kind of 
butts in this lower piece here actually a bit anyways so yeah that's uh that's how i did it pretty rough pretty rough but it works so i'll give you a good look if you want to pause it so yeah i'll put it all back together and uh that's mostly it